the Washington of the West, the conqueror of the Old Northwest, the founder of Louisville. Hey everybody, this is Colonel Carson with Family Tree Nuts, and I'm in Cave Hill Cemetery in Louisville, Kentucky. And I'm at the graveside of General George Rogers Clark. And by the way, if you like our videos, make sure you subscribe to our free YouTube channel and click that little bell so you get notifications as to when we post new videos. George Rogers Clark was born in 1752 near Charlottesville, Virginia. He was taught to survey land by his grandfather. In 1771, he took his first surveying trip into Kentucky. That's right, 1771, that's four years before settlement. In 1774, he served as a captain in the Virginia militia in Lord Dunmore's War. In June of 1776, he was sent as a delegate to the Virginia legislature to request to make Kentucky a county of Virginia. In 1777, there was many attacks on the Kentucky frontier by Native Americans that were backed by the British. The colonial army could not spare men or supplies to Kentucky. Clark requested to Governor Patrick Henry to lead a secret mission against the British outpost north of the Ohio River. In 1778, he set up an outpost on Corn Island at the Falls of the Ohio. This eventually became the city of Louisville. In 1778, Clark led 175 men and took three British forts and several Native American villages. The British Lieutenant Governor William the Hair Buyer Harrison recaptured Vincennes, but Clark led a surprise winter attack and retook the fort, including Hamilton. He sent Hamilton through Kentucky and sent him back to the east as a prisoner. In 1780, the British and the Native Americans led more attacks on Kentucky. Clark then invaded and defeated the Shawnee near modern-day Springfield, Ohio. Governor Patrick Henry then promoted Clark to Brigadier General, command of all the troops in Kentucky and the Illinois Territory. Washington assigned Clark to attack Fort Detroit, but plans fell out for the invasion when troops sent by Washington were defeated before arriving. In 1782, the British and Native Americans again attacked Kentucky at Bryan Station and eventually defeated the Kentucky militia at the Battle of Blue Licks. Clark responded once again to lead an expedition into Ohio in retaliation and destroyed many villages along the Miami River. This was the last major expedition of the Revolutionary War. Now, George Rogers Clark attacks on Native Americans brings him into modern day criticism. This is just another example of how it's hard to judge the men of yesterday by today's standards. Treaties were made with the Native Americans north of the Ohio River, but raids into Kentucky continued. In 1786, he yet again led 1,200 men against Native American villages along the Wabash River. The men almost mutinied, and he was accused of being drunk on duty. There was an investigation, and Clark was proven innocent of all charges, but his reputation had been damaged. At this time, Clark moved to Indiana, near modern-day Clarksville, and that's when his financial issues started. He borrowed money to finance his campaigns, but poor record-keeping caused Virginia and the U.S. government to not reimburse him. He paid the army out of his own pocket. Eventually, Clark was rewarded 150,000 acres of land in southern Indiana, but he didn't have the money to develop it. In 1793, he offered his services to France to take British settlements along the Mississippi River. France made him a major general. Washington prevented Americans to take part in the conflict. The French ambassador was called back to France and the mission fell out. The French did not reimburse Clark for the supplies that he had purchased for the expedition. Clark lost almost all of his land to his creditors and was only able to develop a small grist mill. In 1803, he moved to his retirement home on the Ohio River across from Louisville. While living here, his brother William Clark of the famous Lewis and Clark expedition 
recruited the first members of the Corps of Discovery. They were known as the Nine Young Men from Kentucky. And it's from here the Lewis and Clark Expedition stepped off. In 1809, he suffered a stroke and fell into the fireplace. One of his legs were burned so bad that it had to be amputated. He was sent to live with his sister and brother-in-law, Major William Krogan, at Locust Grove Farm here in Louisville. In 1812, Virginia awarded him a $400 a year pension. That's about $8,500 today. They also awarded him a ceremonial sword for his service. This is not even close to reimburse General Clark for all his sacrifices for his own country. In 1818, General George Rogers Clark suffered a second stroke and died. He was buried at Locust Grove, but he was moved to Cave Hill in 1869. And he's buried right there. He's buried next to his family, General Jonathan Clark, the second in command under General Lincoln at Brandywine, Monmouth, and others. He was captured and eventually released. He's also buried next to one of his other brothers, Captain Edward Clark, and other family members. His youngest brother, William Clark from the Lewis and Clark Expedition, is buried in St. Louis. After his death, Virginia awarded his estate $30,000 for his expenses. But as time went on, more debts were found, and the last payment to his estate was in 1913. General George Rogers Clark has several things that are named after him, such as counties, towns, and schools. He has a monument in Vincennes on the site of Fort Sackville, one of Clark's biggest conquests. The monument is granite and has 16 Doric columns. Inside the monument is a seven and a half foot bronze statue of Clark surrounded by seven murals of Clark's adventures. Each mural is 28 foot tall and 16 foot wide. And each mural took artist Ezra Winter and his six assistants two years to complete. They are Kentucky entering the Great Valley, Cahokia, peace or war with the Indians, the Wabash, through the wilderness and flood, Vincennes, the British barrier to the west, Fort Sackville, Britain yields possession, Marietta, the Northwest, a new territory. St. Louis, the way opened to the Pacific. Other statues near the area are of Francis Vigo, the Italian merchant who worked as a spy for George Rogers Clark, and one of Father Pierre Guibault, the Patriot Priest. For a man that had so much success in early life, he died a simple man and is forgotten by most Americans. This man that was looked up to by so many has this simple gravestone right here. George Rogers Clark is a name that many people have never heard of, but his impact on early America cannot be denied, and we aim to keep his legacy alive. So here we are at the gravesite of General George Rogers Clark, the Washington of the West, the conqueror of the Old Northwest, the founder of Louisville, and an American hero. And remember, family tree nuts, let our nuts find the nuts in your family tree.